Hey guys, so we did a YouTube video recently with Joel Turner coaching me. Then we followed it up with a little teaser from Elk Shape Camp 3.0 where he basically chastised everybody in the beginning about their shooting form. Almost everybody was punching the trigger, not having a controlled shot process. I just showed that as a teaser to kind of promote Joel. He's got his own coaching program online and also promote our online elk shape camp where we show all the videos from every camp we do. It's an online resource. It's a way that I put food on the table for my family. It's kind of like, hey, we film these camps. They're not for free. We're not going to give that information away for free. So I kind of put out a teaser and I and I at the very beginning of the video, he says, don't take offense. And some of y'all took offense and I'm just like looking at these comments. Um, Andrew says, 15 minutes of roasting session. Laugh out loud. Will says, I'll stick to watching Dudley, not some condescending dude with minimal credentials. Can anybody tell me which competitions this guy has won? Everything this guy says is condescending. Even him complimenting or trying to compliment someone, some guy on his bow was almost like talking down to somebody and just a bunch of roasting, barely any actual teaching. I've always liked your videos, Dan, but Joel Turner seems like a real prick. Tearing people down to rebuild them is not a valid form of instruction for any discipline, blah, blah. Okay, so guys. First off, this is elk shape. I'm not soft. You aren't either. Stop being so sensitive. He's trying to help these guys get better and he's got a proven system that works and it's really awesome. So I am making this video for you folks who subscribe to the YouTube channel or made a comment and your feelings got hurt or you were feeling a little extra sensitive that day, this one's for you. I'm gonna give you a little bit more of Joel's actual instruction on his process. Now I'm not gonna give everything away because look, Joel makes a living as a law enforcement, He on the SWAT team, he is a sniper, he is a husband, he is a father, he is a human being, he's a good dude, and he has shot IQ and you can go check that out. He sells a lot of that program to not only people who shoot pistols and rifles and snipers and archery people, he's got several different tracks for traditional and compound, check it out. If you want to see this full lecture as well as all the Elk Shape Camp, you can go to Elk Shape Camp online at our website. But right now I'm going to give you just some video footage from his actual instruction part. I called Joel, made sure it was cool. So the next few minutes, we're going to kind of give you a freemium, let you see some of his instructions so you don't think he's just one big asshole. He's actually a really solid dude and you should know better. I only associate with really good people and I'm not really excited about how those comments were negative. I'm almost offended that you were offended. Tighten up your game. Some people coach that way and that's okay. You know, don't get your feelings hurt. Let's get better together. Watch this video. Thanks for watching. Let's go. Rick, give me the fundamentals of marksmanship for your handgun. Control, slow breathe. Okay, so that's your set of fundamentals, right? Correct. Control, slow, and breathe. Yeah. So in other circles, it's grip, stance, Side alignment, sight, picture, trigger, control, breathing, and follow through. Heard those before? It's like the fundamentals of marksmanship for firearms that have been around for decades, right? Those are not the fundamentals. Those are the fund of physicals. Yes, it's a new word coming to you <laughs> in a dictionary near you, okay? Those are the fund of physicals. Those are physical actions, but they're driven by mental processes that we never practice. When was the last time you practiced? going out and finding determination. You guys haven't practiced that, right? Because if you had, you'd have used it up here. But you didn't. Until you finally got the old F.U. Turner factor to go up a little bit and you're like, I'm going to show this guy, right? And then you finally buckled down and made a decision. So there are a set of fundamentals in shooting that nobody ever practices. Number one, is determination. We cannot teach it to you, we can only help you find it. That's what I did. I helped you find enough determination to write your friggin' name properly. That's all I did. And I did it through ridicule. Finally got you to that point, you're like, F U Turner, that's got to go up. That is a thing now, right? The F U Turner factor is a thing. In fact, it's such a thing that my SWAT guys write F U T on the stock of their rifle. On the back of their Glock, they have a little insignia. 
F-U-T. So when they're looking down their pistol, right below their rear sight, they see F-U-T because I'm constantly messing with those guys to get their determination level up so that they do it perfectly every single time, no matter what. Right? So determination is the first one. But you got to know what to do with it because if you're up here just pissed off, that doesn't really do you any good unless you know how to funnel it into the next fundamental, which is decisions. It wasn't until he finally buckled down and said, everybody's watching you, JC, that he completely switched his mind. I'm going to tell you about the science of that here in just a second. JC finally had to make a decision to do it properly or not at all, no matter what. Each, each one of you made that same decision, whether you know it or not. Because if you just keep trying to do good, you're going to keep moving your pen too fast. Right? So, when you make a decision, especially when you make a decision in the middle of your shot process, it leads you to the next fundamental, which is presence. That leads us, so your presence leads us to the fourth and final fundamental Which is concentration. We don't even know how to do that yet. We're about to get there. These are the fundamentals that people never practice. When was the last time you practiced making a decision? Right? To make yourself more present so that you could concentrate. Open loop motor programs do not require decisions. This is where your mind wants to be. It wants to be automatic, right? Think about your trigger work. Could you actually stop your trigger anywhere within it? Or do you punch it? Right? A trigger punch is too fast for you to stop. Like you can't stop your hinge after the click. It stops for a second, but it's going the other way. And then boom, once it goes as sent as a motor program, it's open loop. Here's the problem with open loop motor programs. They are linked to pre-ignition movements. How many of you have ever flinched on a firearm? Right? Oh, we left the safety on or something, right? Or maybe it wasn't loaded or we put a dummy round in there and you see, ah! Right? You see the trigger work and a bunch of muscle contractions all linked together. That's this. Because you think about that one that you flinched on on the trigger, that was, I mean, the trigger work was too fast, right? You couldn't stop in the middle of it. That's how it got linked to all that stuff. Your mind will not allow you to cause your body impact as a surprise, remember? The core problem in shooting. So, this open loop motor program is what we use to set our stance. It's what we use to put our hand in the bow grip. These are all things that are, have been made automatic and that's good, right, in your shot. That's good for those things to be automatic. You shouldn't have to be thinking, Every time you put your hand and you put your release on, all that stuff, that's, that should be automatic, right? The one movement that can never be made automatic is your shot activation movement. Whatever release you're shooting, if you're shooting your stick bow, whatever, we're going to put a shot activation movement into your stick bow shot, okay? It's got to be a movement that's slow enough you can stop it anywhere within it just like you wrote your name the last time. So, that is what's called a closed loop control system. But what I do want you to know that I do care about is working on your craft. And so, for, for a long time, me personally, I focused so much on aiming and I let pulling through be automatic and Joel's kind of worked and flipped that to where you know what when you drive a car you don't stare at the yellow and white line and and constantly recorrect your body can subconsciously steer and aim pretty well making this part being a slow down process and being in control still getting a surprise release so you don't your body doesn't brace for impact now archery is tricky because like you know, if you're shooting a gun prone, you know, your whole body is still and you're just slowly squeezing and bracing for impact is not going to be hard to overcome. But when you have archery and you have a bow arm and you're pulling back and you're pulling, pulling, you have tension, but you're supposed to not brace for impact, you're going to have to maybe listen to this guy's system. It's pretty sharp.